Hello, my name is Ivan Taylor, and I, uh, I'm from Ontario, Canada, and um, I'd like to talk to you today uh, about a practical uh, system dynamics modeling, which, uh, which uh, I hope to show you how I, how I do system dynamics modeling. Um, uh, today I'm going to talk, I'm going to answer the question, what is system dynamics? And I'm going to provide a simple system dynamics model to show you how I build system dynamics models. And then I'll go through some uh, example models that aren't so simple and show you some uh, uh, work that I've done in the, in the recent past. And I'll end with some concluding thoughts. <clears throat> So what is system dynamics? Well, uh, system dynamics is interested in things that change with time. And it's basically a type of computer simulation and it uh, uses continuous time and continuous variables. Uh, in, in the way it's actually done mathematically is you're solving a highly interconnected system of first linear first order differential equations solved using numerical methods. So that is basically calculus. However, uh, you don't need to, to worry too much about the differential equations or the calculus because you set up the model in the software and the calculus is done automatically. So let's do a simple model. Uh, this is going to be a population model with births and deaths. And I'm going to start off by building the model in the special purpose software, Vensim. And Vensim uh, provides a free personal learning edition uh, on their website that you can download and use for free if it's for educational or learning purposes. I'm then going to convert the model, the population model, to Excel and show you that you can generate the exact same model in Excel uh, that is developed in Vincent. And then I'm going to show you how I calibrate uh, a model using the solver in Excel. Okay, so let's um, let's go to Vensim. <clears throat> and this is the Vensim home screen. And I'm going to create a new model. And let's say um, I'm going to run it for 100 years. And um, so I'm going to say years here, 100 years at a step time of one year. And I'm going to use Euler integration to do the solving. I'll talk more about that later. Okay, so the population model is uh, quite simple. You have uh, a, a stock of people, population, and um, we have uh, an inflow to the population of births, and we have an outflow from the population of deaths, and we have um, a birth, uh, we have uh, an initial population, and I generally use the um, the standard, me uh, the method of, of putting a constant values or parameters of the model in capital letters, and endogenous variables in small letters, and stock variables in um, in first letter capitals. So I have to put in some parameters of the model. And so now I have to, so now I have the, the basics of the model. I now have to connect these things together using the arrow. Oops. Okay, and now I'm going to 
define these variables. So I'm going to start off with an initial population of the world of 2.5 billion people. And that's units people. I guess I should use small letters. OK, and then I have um, the, the population is a stock. And you can see that we have births minus deaths. And the initial value is the initial population. And this is in units of people. And then we have uh, the births. And the births is equal to the population times the birth rate. And that's in people per year. And the deaths is equal to the population divided by the life expectancy. And that's in people per year. And then the birth rate let's say the birth rate for now is 0 0.04 or let's say um, we'll say it's 40 divided by a thousand so there's 40 people born per year for every thousand people and this now is in people per people per year so this is 40 people per thousand people so it's 40 people per people per year and then this life expectancy, let's say the life expectancy is 60, and this is in years. And now we have a model. Uh, we, can, we can see that all the variables are defined, and we can check the units, and we can save the model if we want. Uh, the units are OK. And then we can run the model. And we can look at the results in graphical terms. And we see the population growing like this. And we can look at the values in tabular terms. And we can see the population growing like this. OK, so now I'm going to do the same thing in Excel. So let's look at Excel. And we have now. Uh, in this case, Excel is going to use the very same variables, but we're going to do um, a, uh, the model in every variable will be a column. And the first column is the year. And I'm going to look at from the year 1950 to 2020. So I have, I'm going to start with a column that is called births. I like to do the inflows on the left and the outflows on the right. So then I have population, and then I have deaths. And then I have some constants. So I have a constant of um, the, the birth rate. So let's put the birth rate in here. And I have the life expectancy in here. And, and now I'm going to put, uh, I'll also put the initial population here. And I'll specify these um, these. So I have 2.5 billion people to start with. I have a life expectancy of 60 years and I have a birth rate of 0 0.04. And so I specify here the initial population. So there's the initial population. And then I have the births, which is the population times, times the birth rate. And I need to anchor that value. So I put a dollar sign here. And then I say the deaths. So the deaths are the population divided by the life expectancy. And I put a dollar sign there to anchor that. And then I copy this down. And I copy this down here. 
And then I, I need to calculate the new population in, in 1951. And the new population is equal to um, the, let's, uh, let's do something else here. Let's put in the step time. So the step time is one year. So let's uh, say, now we calculate the population. So the population in 1951 is the population in 1950 plus the step time times brackets, the births plus the births minus the deaths. And that is the new population. And then I can cut, and I can copy and paste these values down here to 2020. And I get these values here. And um, did that work properly? Uh, oh, no, I have to. I have to anchor this value here, sorry. Okay, I anchor this value and I get um, the values down to 2020. And now we see we have these values and let's look at the value for 2020. And that's, um, Oh, let, let's look at the value after 10 years, let's say. So in, tw in, in 1960, the value is 3.15 to the power nine. And if we go to Vensim and look at, the at, at 10, we see it's 3.14 or 1, 5. Yeah, so it's 3.15 and 3.15. So we can see we get the exact same values in both places. So that's how I uh, built a model. Now, um, uh, now I'm going to show you how I calibrate a model. So I have um, some data on the population as shown here uh, in this column. I have the data on the population in this column. This is the, this is the data that's been recorded uh, on a website called Microtrends Historical World Data. And this is the data calculated in the model. And then I have the difference between the Excel data and the historical data shown here. And I have then the square uh, value of the difference between the Excel data and the historical data squared. And then in this column here, in this uh, cell here, I have the sum of all of these squared errors. And so if I uh, do a calculation and I run the solver um, where I, um, I minimize this squared error, and I'm going to um, I'm going to change these values here, and I will I will delete this and delete this, and I will run the model. I'll run the solver to minimize the squared error. So I get this. And uh, you can now see the match between the data and the model on this graph here. And you can see that the model in blue and the data in red and orange uh, are somewhat similar, but not perfect. And I think the reason they're not very good is because the birth rate and the death rate is not a constant value. So I developed a new model, which allows the birth rate to change and the death rate to change. So I have here uh, some other parameters. So I'm going to I'm going to delete uh, delete these values. Uh, well, no, I'm just going to change the values. So here I'm going to start with. 
actually I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to delete these values. Um, so let's delete them and let's add a column. So I'm going to insert a column and now I'm going to calculate the birth rate, the birth rate and the death rate. And I'm going to calculate um, the change in the birth rate and calculate the change in the death rate. Okay, and now I'm going to specify that the, the new, the birth rate will start at this initial birth fraction or birth rate. And the death rate will start, the death rate is just one over the life expectancy and it's going to start at this initial value. And then we're going to change the value where we say the change is equal to the long-term value shown here, the long-term birth rate. And we're gonna, we're gonna uh, anchor that. And then we're gonna subtract um, the current birth rate. And then we're gonna divide by the time to close the gap between the long-term birth rate and the current birth rate. So that's gonna be the change. And similarly, we have the change in the death rate. So we have the current, we have the long-term death rate shown here. And we're gonna anchor that. And then we're going to subtract the current death rate here. And we're going to divide by the time to adjust the, the, the birth rate here. And we now have the change in the birth rate and the change in the death rate. And we can see both of these numbers are negatives. And then we calculate the new birth rate as simply the birth rate plus the step time anchored time, uh, times the change in the birth rate here. And then we calculate um, the death rate is equal to the previous death rate plus the step time. And I'm gonna anchor that. And then I'm going to say times the change in the death rate. Okay, and then I'm gonna calculate the new change in the death rate Oh, sorry, I'm going to calculate. I'm going to calculate the new change in the death rate. And the new change in the birth rate and the death rate. And then I'm going to cut and paste these down to 2020. And I'm going to recalculate now the births and the deaths. So now the births are equal to um, the birth rate in 20, 1950 times the population in 1950. Uh, and, and then I will then copy and paste that down to 2020. I missed a cell, no, I didn't. And then I say the deaths is equal to the population in, in 1950 times the death rate in 1950. And then I copy this down. and the initial population. I'm going to specify the initial population now 
to be equal to this value here, which is the starting point of the data. And now I have a new model and you can see this model is a better fit, but I'm going to now minimize the squared error here. I'm gonna do the minimization and I'm gonna minimize um, based on changing the variables here. I will change these two values and I will change these two values and I will change these two values. So I'm gonna change six values. I'm gonna minimize the squared error and I get this result. And if you now look at the model, we see that we have a pretty good match between the model and the data. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the way I generally work. I start with the uh, Vensim PLE, I build the model in Vensim, and I check the units, and I make sure the formulas are correct. Then I transfer the model to Excel, as I, as I did here. And then I do a calibration of the parameters of the model so that I get a, a good fit between the historical data and the model. And then I feel comfortable with extrapolating into the future. Okay, so now let's go back to Vensim. Let's go back to my presentation. Okay, so I have, um, uh, let me just, uh, continue this slide from here. Okay, so we have, um, I'm gonna show you some example models. And the first model I'm gonna show you is um, a dairy waste management model that's based on a large dairy farm in Bangladesh. Okay, so let's look at this example and we will close this and we won't save it. We won't save it. And we will go to uh, Vensim and we'll close this and we won't save it. But we're going to open now um, the, and open open the dairy waste management model. And here is the dairy waste management model in Vensim. And uh, it's kind of complicated. You probably can't read all the variables. But basically, um, you can see that it looks like a, a very complex um, um, system dynamics model. And we can check the units. Oh, we see we have a, a couple of unit errors. Um, I think the problem here is that we have the units of years instead of months. So let's change the change the settings to years. Uh, maybe that's not right. Anyways, let me. Sorry. Let me go back, change it back to months. And let's see if we can correct this unit error. There's two unit errors and the average cell is months. And the right-hand side cow sales is cows per year. So let's say cow sales should be equal to Instead of cows per year, it should be cows per month. And then uh, if we see now, we check the units again, and now they're okay. Okay, so let's save that. Okay, so now we can see that we have um, we have the settings and the model. So the settings, we're gonna run this for 36 months or three years. And we're gonna have a step time here of 0 0.0, 0 0.125, one eighth of a, of a month. And we're gonna still use Euler integration. 
Okay, so if we run the model, we can see that we have a certain number of calves and we have a certain number of mature cows. And let me just, uh, let me just change this so we have okay so here we have the number of cow cows and the number of calves And you can see how they change. And now I'm sure you the, the Excel version of the model. So here's the dairy waste model in Excel. So you can see here in Excel, we have um, these variables in the columns time at 1.25 um, months uh, increments, and then the various variables. And then we have um, the data here in blue for the total calves and the model in pink. And you can see the cows and the, the cattle and the calves. And you can see this is a good fit between the model and the data. So that uh, shows you that uh, you can, that, that we have this data on this side here. We have uh, the date in months. We have the number of milking cows and the number of dry cows and the mature cattle and so on and so on. So now we can graph the data against the model and we can see we get a good fit. And this is the, we're going to, if we solve the solver, we're going to minimize this squared error and going to get the, that result. Okay, so um, that's the dairy waste model. So let's close that and let's not save it. And let's close the Vincent model. And let's not save it. Okay, so now let's go to the next model. And that is the diversity of an organization. So here is, uh, now this is a model. Oh, let me just uh, go now to the diversity of the organization model. So here we have now, uh, we're gonna open the diversity model. And this model is intended to show you um, the, um, the, the patterns of, of growth in an organization and the growth in terms of the minority workers from the minority and the people and the workers and managers from the majority. So this is a, a little different presentation. In this case, we use the Vincent views to show um, different parts of the model separately, at, at different, which is a different way of presenting it than was shown in the, in the dairy waste model, which showed all of the variable, all the model in one page. So this shows the majority applicants, majority workers, majority managers, and the path they take to go from one stage to the other during their career. And this shows the minority applicants, the minority workers, the minority managers, and how they progress throughout their career. So let's go to now the diversity model. And I will open up, oh, sorry, I'll open up the Excel version of this. And this is a little differently presented. We have um, the model shown here, which has all of the variables in the columns with time and the variables. And this is quite a large model. 
there's quite a few variables. You can see all the columns here in the model, which have each of these columns is a variable. And we have a lot of, of data on the um, parameters of the model, which are shown in these capital letter areas here. And then we have some data on the actual values for the managers and the calibrated model. And then I show here um, the, the results. And here we have um, the data in pink, no, the data in blue and the model in pink. And we only have five years worth of data from, nine, from 2017 to 2021. And we have these parameter values of the model and we wanna minimize the squared error. So let's say we take this and we use the solver and we minimize this value here. And we also have constraints on the variables, which we've added here in this section of the solver. And then we run the model and we minimize the squared error and we get these results. And then we go back to the Vensim model and we enter those results, those parameters into the Vensim model. And if we run the Vensim model, Let's make sure we have um, the results. So we will look at the minority workers and we see the minority workers goes like that. And the majority and the minority managers goes like that. And, and the majority workers and the majority managers and we were primarily interested in the fraction of the minority uh, in the organization. So we had this idea of the fraction of the minority workers going like this and the fraction of the minority managers going like this. So this is um, the model that we used in Vincent and we ran a number of scenarios off of this model for different, uh, different values of the parameters. Okay, so I think you're starting to see a pattern here. Um, we'll go to the next model, which is a model of small business success and failure. <laughs> so again, we have um, close this and then we'll open a new, a new model. So the new model is called um, the WOC small business model. And this model shows um, a, a progression of a small business entrepreneur through the system where they start off outside the system, they start a business and then they have a business for the first year and it could succeed and actually be bought out and then, or it could fail in its first year or it could continue to the second year and, to the, and then carry on for five years could carry on then from five to 10 years and more than 10 years. At each stage, it could fail or it could be bought out and, and the entrepreneur could go back into the system here and start a new business. So this is the general framework. Um, and then we can look at the, we can look at the Excel version of the model. Uh, so we have, this model here. And we can see here that we have um, all the variables in the columns and we have the parameters here in the capital letters. And here we have the data. So we see we have the number of um, businesses in first year and we can see the model in pink and the data in blue. And then we have the data on the, on the businesses in their second to fifth year, and then the businesses in their five to 10 years, 
and then the businesses in greater than 10 years. And we can see that we have a, a pretty good match between the model and the data for this period of time. Now, one of the things about this model that I think is particularly interesting is this period here which shows a drop in the number of new businesses. And that was occurring in 2008, which was the financial crisis. So during the financial crisis of 2008, there was a drop in the number of businesses. Now, we, th we were thinking that what if the COVID crisis created the same sort of pattern that we had a drop in the number of businesses uh, that is created by COVID? So then we had a run like this, and we can see here, we have um, the model in, and, and we can see the drop in the number of businesses around 2008 to 2010, the increase then to 2020, and then COVID happening, and then a an, uh, then drop in the businesses, and then an increase in businesses after COVID is over. So that was um, uh, the way we looked at this, at this problem of, of small businesses and how they were affected by these uh, international crises. So we built the model in Bensam, we transferred it to Excel, we calibrated the model using the historical data, we found the parameters of the model, we brought them back into Bensim and we ran different scenarios. Okay, so let's close this and let's close this and let's go on to the next model. And this is small business clusters. So this is another model that uh, we built in Bensim. It's a little bit simpler. So we'll open it up and it's called SME clusters. And we see we have uh, SMEs in the clusters. We have joining and leaving and we have various resources. So we can see we have another page of financial resources with additions to financial resources and consumption of financial resources. And then we have infrastructure and we have um, Human, human resources. So we have these various resources that impact the joining rate and the leaving rate uh, from the cluster. So if we go to Excel, we converted this model to Excel uh, and we have the SME cluster model. And we looked at two uh, regions of, uh, of India and we found this kind of data here on the regions where we had uh, data from 1994 to 2021. And we saw the pattern of behavior which shows um, the businesses in blue and the model in pink. And we got a very good fit for this, uh, this um, Maharashtra. And then we also looked at Delhi which showed the same sort of pattern and we see here we have the, uh, the same sort of pattern and we got a pretty good fit of the model. So then we went back to Bensim and we entered the data and in the, we entered the parameter values and we can run the model. And oh, I see there's some issues with the lookup table, but that's not too worrisome. We will, um, the lookup table is for the actual values. So if we um, look at the SME values, we see that we get this kind of pattern here. And uh, this shows the period up until 2021. And then we looked at ways to, to, to return to a growth uh, idea in the future. So we built scenarios into the future where we saw growth in the in the number of SMEs back to a, a fairly high level. Okay, so let's close this. And let's close the Excel spreadsheet. And let's not save it. Okay, so let's look at the last model. 
And the last model is uh, something that's, uh, I think, a serious problem in the world, and that is control of corruption. And this was a highly complex model. And we can see here, when we open the model, um, it has uh, many, many pages. You can see it has uh, 14 different pages and each page represents an institution. So this is control of corruption and the government sets targets on how the, what control of corruption they want. But these targets are modified by progress in various institutions such as, um, as control of organized crime and, and control of income inequality. And these institutions are all shown on each of these pages. So there's voice and accountability, there's economic openness, and these are very similar models, but slightly different in their connections between each other. And so if we run this model, and we, we go here, and we look at corruption, We see that we have this kind of pattern in control of corruption, and we see that we have a decline in the control of corruption in the long term. And if we now go to the Excel model, so we have this corruption model, and this is um, this is the match between the data and the model for um, control of corruption. And we have all of these other institutions shown here. And, and then we have um, the trends in the institutions shown here. And we can say um, that we can look at how can we um, improve the control of corruption by influencing these different institutions and we can get um, the results shown here. By improving the institutions, we can go from a long-term trend that's slightly downwards to an upward trend here in the future on to 2026. Okay, so that is the last model I wanna show you. I'll close this and let's close this. And uh, now I'll just go back. So I have done all of um, all of the uh, models that I want to show you, and I want to just summarize what I what I talked about. So we begin our our, our models by uh, building the model in stock and flow diagrams in Ben Sim PLE because that's very easy to do. It's very fast and simple, and you can check the units to make sure your equations are accurate. Then with uh, the PLE version of the model, we take that and convert it to uh, Excel. And, and then we verify that the Excel results match the results in VinSim. And then we calibrate the model in Excel using the solver. And then we enter the calibrated parameters into the VinSim model, and then we can run scenarios in VinSim. Okay, so that's uh, just the examples of how I, I do uh, my work, in, and I consider this uh, a very practical way to, um, to do system dynamics modeling. So if there's any questions, I'll take them now.